it's finally here. Hey, what's up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is why I ramble about tech and other stuff. So I was hoping to do this unboxing and give you my first impressions last Friday, but I got a message from Samsung saying the delivery was delayed due to an overwhelming success in pre-orders. I wouldn't exactly call poor planning and not delivering on a prepaid order a success, but there you go. At least I got to finally clear out that garage. I had a little cry about it. You can click up here if you want to see me sob. So since I've been covering mostly Apple stuff on this channel, I did a little poll to see if you guys would even be interested in a review of an S21 Ultra and the people have spoken. If you're here for Apple content, do not worry. There will be plenty more of that. But when it comes to phones, I'm a little bi curious. I do have a marriage of convenience with the iPhone because that is what currently makes most sense in my ecosystem, which is predominantly Apple. But we agreed to have an open relationship. So every now and then I like to dip my toes in the Android pool, Samsung more specifically. Today, we'll focus on the unboxing and first impressions of the Galaxy S21 Ultra. I'll be doing a full review after I've used it for at least 24 hours. And in one of the next videos, we'll also be checking out some of the best cases for it. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell so you know when all that's up. So let's ramble. Hold up, please go up when I pull up. They all on me like it wants them. So in the box, we have the S21 Ultra, the Galaxy Buds Pro and the Galaxy Smart Tag. And that's because these two came with the phone for free as a pre-order gift, which is pretty awesome. I'll review them in a separate video after I've been able to spend some time with them. So let's do what we all came here for and let's open up this bad boy. So in the box, we have the phone and a cable. No brick, which sucks, but at least Samsung lowered the price of their bricks in case you need to buy one. Take notes, Apple. But we're here for the phone, so let's peel off that virgin plastic. Ah, oh, sweet mother of Android, this never gets old. Oh man, the first thing that jumps out at me is this amazing matte black backside. I really do think this is the best color for phones. I love that it's matte so it will attract less fingerprints. The camera bump is also very interesting. I hate the fact that all the camera bumps these days stick out so much, but I'm kind of digging this plate look. It's almost like the cameras are sunken into it. Now, one of the main reasons I don't like these bumps is the fact that it causes the phone to wobble when it's flat on a desk or a table. Let me just put the iPhone next to it. I'm a case kind of guy, so normally this is a non-issue, like on my iPhone here. When I put on the case, the camera bumps are gone and so is most of the wobble. But I had a look at the official Samsung silicone cases and it looks like they have a bump as well. And that really bothers me. So I guess the third party case could be a solution. Anyway, on the sides, we have the power button and the volume rockers. We have the mics up here. And then there is a speaker. Now, when we take out the SIM tray, there is a little reason for disappointment. No more micro SD card, just the SIM card, which means we can no longer expand the memory on the Samsung. And that's a bummer because that's a big selling point for a lot of people, as it's an inexpensive way to get more storage on what is otherwise a pretty expensive phone. The battery is massive. It's 5000 milliamp hours, which is more than twice as much as my iPhone mini, which might as well be running on AAA batteries. It's horrible. But of course, this screen on the Samsung is a lot bigger and brighter, so you're gonna need that extra juice. So let's turn it on and have a look at how good this screen actually is. Wow, I love these thin bezels. It, I think it looks great. I just don't understand why they left the curved edges on this one. The S21 Plus has a flat panel, and I would have much preferred to see that on this model as well. Especially on a phone this size, it's gonna be hard not to accidentally touch the screen. I'll go set this up really quick and I'll skip the process for you so we can have a quick look at some of the features. All right, so we're all set up and let's just take a moment to marvel at this ridiculously crisp, insanely snappy 
1.8 inch 120 hertz adaptive panel. I've heard it before. Oh, you won't even notice that difference between 60 and 120 hertz. Uh, you will. And yes, it is adaptive because it will give you the full high refresh rate when you're gaming or viewing content that requires it, but it can drop as low as 10 hertz when you're just looking at pictures. And of course, all of this is to conserve battery. It's an AMOLED 2X screen, which means better color, HDR and brightness, just to name a few. It has a peak brightness of 1500 nits, which is pretty damn bright. Now, as for the resolution, this is a 3200 by 1400 panel, and that is WQHD+, which is obviously super crispy. This display is amazing, but that's to be expected since screens are kind of Samsung's thing. Another feature I greatly appreciate is the fingerprint scanner. It has facial recognition and that works just fine, but when the whole world is wearing face masks, that's not really gonna be very useful. And I really do not understand why Apple didn't put a fingerprint scanner in their iPhone 12 lineup. I mean, let's face it, pun definitely intended. This isn't gonna be the last time people are gonna need to wear a face mask. So this should really be a standard feature in all phones. All right, moving on to the speakers. They sound all right. Let's play a little song and you can judge for yourself. Let's choose some of my daughter's favorites. enough of that. Now obviously this is recorded on a mic and it might sound different in person but you get the idea. Now let's talk about the S Pen for a bit. This phone is compatible with it. I've always been a big fan of the S Pen. Back when I was using Samsung tablets I loved using them to take handwritten notes. I think it's better than the Apple Pencil for note taking. Yeah I said it but there's a but. What is the point of making it compatible but not including a slot inside the phone for it? Who's gonna wanna carry around an S Pen in their pocket separate from the phone? I know there are cases that accommodate the S Pen, but they're obviously gonna add bulk to the phone and it's just not practical. Also, those cases keep the S Pen on the left, which makes no sense, except of course, if you're a lefty. And if you're gonna add S Pen functionality, then why not just scrap the entire Note series and just stick an S Pen in the Ultra from now on? Anyway, that's just my two cents. All right, a quick look at the camera. It has a massive 108 megapixel sensor, which is more than twice as much as the Canon R5 that I'm using to film myself right now. Of course, that's apples and oranges, but still, that's a lot of megapixels. It has a 12 megapixel ultra wide, it has a 108 megapixel wide camera, and then it has two telephoto lenses, one 10 times optical zoom and one three times optical zoom, both at 10 megapixels. The last circle on the back is a laser autofocus sensor. Flip it over and you got a 40 megapixel selfie camera. The selfie camera can shoot 4K video at 30 frames and 60 frames per second, which is pretty impressive for any camera, let alone a selfie camera. The standard wide angle lens can shoot 4K at 60 frames and up to 8K at 24 frames a second. Oh, and if you're worried about performance, this beast has 12 gigabytes of RAM, unless you have the 512 gigabyte storage option, because then you will be rocking a whopping 16 gigabytes of RAM. So I guess we can all agree that this phone is a monster on paper. Now let's test this thing for a couple of days and see if it lives up to its spec sheet. Guys, if you liked the video, please give it one of these. It'll really help to get the video to more people. And if you're interested in seeing the full review, a sub to the channel would be awesome. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.